All right, welcome back, boys and girls, to another edition of Top 10 Toys. Uh, this week, I actually wanted to cover something a little bit different because uh, I finally got around to watching Cobra Kai. With Season 3 dropping this weekend uh, over on Netflix, I finally decided to take numerous recommendations to heart and actually sit down and start watching this show. And I got to say, I am thoroughly enjoying it. I'm still in the midst of the first season, so I still got a lot of catching up to do before I can get to the new season this weekend. But... I'm enjoying every minute of it. So I thought, why not look back at some of these Karate Kid toys that we have? Now, there's a lot of newer toys going back and trying to tap into that nostalgia market. But uh, a good chunk of this list hits up some toys that came back out in 1986 from Remco. So, all like I said, Cobra Kai, Karate Kid, they are kind of, you know, one and the same synonymous. So we can't have Cobra Kai without have talking, you know, Daniel LaRusso as well. So coming out, I believe, uh, in January this month is uh, a new a new set of toys with uh, Johnny and Daniel. I think these are from Icon or something uh, or the other. I saw them on Entertainment Earth. I think they're like 40 bucks each to pre-order. They're pretty cool looking figures. They uh, look like they're about six inches. They have a lot of extra little you know pieces, hands to pose and you know do whatever you want to do with them. Looks pretty cool, but not covering those because those aren't even for sale yet. Uh, in addition, there is also this uh, reaction line from uh, Funko. Now, I'm not a huge fan of these because they, you know, they look like classic older toys and uh, look kind of like the Remco figures from uh, way, way back. I don't know if you've ever seen those horror figures uh, you know, that had the Universal Monsters, but kind of reminds me a bit of those. Maybe a little bit of the original Star Wars as well, but just, you know, very simple molds, uh, not a lot of detail, but, you know, instantly recognizable in the same way that a Funko Pop is recognizable as uh, the characters. It's not really my thing, but uh, those were out there, too. I would have put them in the list had any of them qualified price-wise for how they were selling, but none of them, unfortunately, did. So, I just wanted to take note of those because most of this list is going to be, uh, it's, basically, it's basically NECA and, uh, and the Remco line from 1986 that I mentioned. So, without further ado, let's just get right into this list. And, uh, like, again, these two also didn't make the list. We have uh, Daniel LaRusso. From NECA, pretty cool figure. It, it looks with all the clothing on him, it looks a little bit frumpy, a little bit uh, almost heavy set, like I'm getting these days uh, with the COVID weight, but it's still pretty cool. I like to check it out. He comes with this little bonsai tree and he's got his chopsticks, so that's kind of fun. And uh, again, the Miyagi, same deal, you know, with the little overalls. Again, they look a little frumpy because of uh, the actual cloth garments that they give them. So, you know, these are little figures, these aren't people, so they don't get to tailor the suits for all of them, but still really cool figures from NECA. They almost made the list. Most of them come from this, uh, again, Remco line from 1986. Now, these didn't come out with the first movie that I believe was 1984. This was with the sequel, Karate Kid 2, where they finally decided to, hey, you know what? Let's capitalize on this karate, you know, karate kid uh, phenomenon we've got going on and uh, throw a second movie out there and uh, just get right into trying to sell toys and uh, other uh, memorabilia to make a few bucks. Now, these are interesting little figures. Uh, again, they're not the greatest of molds. They look a little bit like hobbits a bit to me, but uh, they were still kind of fun. They uh, were almost like a cross between uh, a Masters of the Universe and a Kenner Superpowers in that they had that kind of squat look of a, of a He-Man figure, but you know had a little bit of action uh, built into them like a Kenner Superpowers uh, figure would. So a bunch of these are from that line. And then uh, stick around after we get through to 10 because I'm going to do some of the play sets as sort of honorable mentions because I didn't really see it fair putting toy sets into the list uh, in this case again because otherwise it would be dominated by the sets because the sets are, you know, they're generally more expensive to begin with. So uh, they're in the aftermarket. They're also not sold as easily as the figures. So they usually command a higher premium. So let's just uh, go right to the top 10 and uh, take a look, see what we got. All right. So. As I noted, the first figure we got going here is uh, from the NECA line. And uh, just like the Daniel and uh, Mr. Miyagi, this is the Johnny Lawrence figure, who, you know, star of uh, Cobra Kai here. This is him in his iconic, you know, Halloween skeleton garb. Now, this is a really cool figure. Uh, I, I This one doesn't look as frumpy as the others because I guess it's more of a form-fitting, uh, you know, bodysuit that they put onto this figure. But this is just a really cool look here. And if you look closely, you can even see he has the Walkman and you know that he had on when, at the Halloween dance when uh, you know he was rolling, rolling that little uh, something in the bathroom when uh, Daniel got his uh, got his revenge on him by uh, hitting him with a hose full of water. So I think it was a nice little touch them adding that little uh, accessory into this figure. So I thought it was kind of cool. So 
that one makes our list here at number 10. And I believe that comes in at number 10 because it's averaging yeah, about uh, 48, yeah, 48 bucks, 49 bucks or so. Uh, these I think were had a, like a 30 or $34 uh, retail. So it's a little bit of a premium these days, uh, more so than the, um, the Daniel or the uh, Mr. Miyagi. So that is why he comes in at number 10. Moving on down our list to number nine, we have his master, John Kreese. Uh, this was a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive in uh, 2019, and this one has been selling for a bit more than uh, yeah, than those regular figures, because obviously the, the limited nature of a convention exclusive, it's not available to everyone. Uh, you can try to order pieces online or hope somebody's there at the show to grab you one or just buy it in the aftermarket. But uh, this John Kreese comes in at number nine, and it is also a really cool mold. Uh, it looks pretty good. Yeah, you know, for the figure, doesn't look frumpy as those, uh, you know, the other two that I first mentioned. And this one's averaging about uh, 87 bucks or so. So uh, not cheap, not cheap, but not going to not gonna break your back uh, too much if you really, really want this. I think it's a pretty cool figure, but uh, that is why it comes in at number nine, this uh, NECA figure. Which is going to take us to our next bit of the list and hit up number eight, which is going to start us in on this uh, Remco line. Now, as I noted before... You know, a lot of these figures, uh, they look a little bit the same, kind of the same body type, again, in that kind of Masters of the Universe type of uh, uh, way, in that the, it looks like they just basically have a very similar molds that are reused uh, over and over again to uh, build out this figure toy line and, uh, you know, just different heads and different, uh, you know, actions that they might be doing. Now, this line had a couple of different uh, variants throughout the way. Like, each figure has more than one version. Uh, including like a later release red carded version, which seems to be selling for a little bit more in most cases than the uh, earlier releases. Uh, I don't know if they're just harder to find, more limited because they came a little bit later. Uh, but these were, all, from what I gathered, all released uh, right there in uh, 1986, uh, along with that uh, second Karate Kid movie. So the first figure that we're going to take from that Remco line is the big bad to start, Sato. So Sato comes in at number eight, and he's got this, you know, chopping action, which you know, is pretty cool. Uh, I guess there was no real way for them to do that punching motion. Uh, actually, no, he was chopping. He was chopping that uh, that log there when Miyagi came to see him uh, in the uh, you know, in the movie. So I guess that is a an apt uh, power move for him. I don't know about this crazy kick they have for him doing on the uh, red carded version, but uh, Sato again, he started out as the bad without ruining it. You know, they become friends at the end. Uh, but he still is our number eight figure on this list. And uh, we're going to take that to our number seven pick, which is going to go back to, you know, Cobra Kai master John Kreese. And this is, you know, the Remco version of this figure. Uh, again, he's got a couple of different looks as well. Um, this one, I guess, looks like has a kicking action here on this first one. And uh, he comes in at number seven. Oh, by the way, that's Sato. I should go back and say that Sato was selling for about 112 bucks, where uh, Crease is averaging more about 143. So uh, this Crease figure, and you can see they also gave him a separate uh, purple suit to kind of liven things up, I guess, in that red carded version. And it's just kind of odd to me that they would include, uh, you know, Crease because he ha all had but that one tiny scene at the very beginning, which took place immediately after, you know, the tournament from the first movie, where you know he was breaking Johnny's trophy and beating him up at a parking lot before you get the, you know, honk. But, uh, yeah, he got an action figure. He got multiple action figures because they gave a couple different versions, as you can see here. But, again, the red carded ones, again, sell for a little bit more than the uh, than the, uh, the first editions. But, uh, again, this is about $143, which will take us to our number six, which takes us back to NECA. And this is a two-pack, which is the tournament two-pack that has Johnny and Daniel, you know, basically squaring off. Uh, and it has a little ring. Well, or not a ring, but it has a mat and a little feature inside the card and the trophy, which is pretty cool, as well as a, you know, to scale All Valley uh, tournament uh, poster there that you can get in this uh, this two-pack set, which is, yeah, it, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. This is, uh, I think it was about 68 bucks or so to buy because you about two, the cost of two figures for the most part at uh, retail, but this one's moving for a little over 140 you know, $145 or so, uh, so... That's not too bad. Uh, not too bad of a return on this. And again, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool set. Uh, the Icon set that I think is coming is very reminiscent of this set, but uh, this one coming together in this uh, same double pack is uh, definitely one to keep an eye out for if you are a collector because it's a good way to get both figures you know, in, in one purchase. So that will take us to our top five. So take a quick pause. 
And let's see what we got going on here in our top five. At number five, we are going to first hit up with Mr. Miyagi. Uh, I can't not have this list without having a Mr. Miyagi in here. Once again, multiple versions of these figures, different colors. I believe there's a blue pants, there's a white pants version. Uh, there's also the red card where he's got this almost like a pink or a fuchsia kind of suit going on. But Mr. Miyagi is making the list at number five because he's averaging about $151 uh, for a carded figure. Uh, I wanted to stick with the carded figures again because it's a little more uniform uh, than it is to try to do the loose. Loose, these things can go anywhere from as cheap as like 10 bucks to upwards of 50 bucks, depending on the figure, whether you got the pieces, the little uh, breakable things. You can see these guys, the figures come with like walls they can kick and you know, boards and ice blocks and what have you as a little accessory. So depending on whether you have the accessories or not, uh, that could really change the, you know, the price of uh, the figure. So I wanted to stick again with the carded. So Miyagi's about 151 bucks uh, on average is why he hits up at number five. And then moving on the list, we go to our bad guy, the basically the uh, Johnny Lawrence of Karate Kid 2, Chosen. Uh, you know, little tough guy. Seems like they were stuck in the 1950s there in the 1980s. It was almost like watching Napoleon Dynamite or something that they were just kind of plucked at a time. But uh, Chosen is uh, not a cheap figure. Uh, this one averages about $185. And uh, granted, that's only over three sales, but uh, $185 bucks if you want to get a carded Chosen figure. You can see we have the yellow, the yellow suit and the regular edition, red card version as well, where you got a little bit of that uh, fuchsia pants. I really love that uh, fuchsia color, I guess, there in the uh, in 1986. So it was reused uh, quite a bit. But Chosen, number four, which will take us to number three, Danielson. Yeah, again, got to have Danielson on this list. I believe he actually had four uh, of versions in uh, in this run, where you have the you know, the white suit, they uh, rolled them in with a uh, red, red gi as well. And then apart from getting the gold gi on the red card, there was also a version where the, the gi wasn't a cloth. It was actually hard plastic as well uh, from that earlier edition. And different uh, action motions that they had throughout this. Uh, I'm sure these probably are sell a little bit differently. Again, I think the red ones move for a tiny bit more, but I couldn't really go through much of a breakdown. I found 10 sales of different Danielson uh, figures, which gave him an average of about $216 uh, thereabouts. And again, you can see there's multiple colors. So depending on which one you want to get, you, you can find out which one sells uh, for more, which one you would like more uh, out of those four different options that you get. Uh, but the quick, quick review is the red card was usually more in most cases. In fact, I think there was one day where three of these carded figures all sold at best offers, like 200 bucks a piece. And it was like three different versions of it all once. I don't know if it was the same buyer or what, but it was like bang, bang, bang. They were all listed there. So that was number three. So this is going to take us to number two, which is a little bit different. I know I said I wasn't going to include the play sets, but this isn't exactly a play set. It's more of, it was a, an action set. It was almost like a two-pack with some extras thrown in. Now, this six-piece action set uh, averages about $282 uh, thereabouts as far as sales go in the box. Found a couple of sales, uh, you know, to support that price. But this had the Miyagi, and it had that uh, Red Gi uh, Danielson in there. And uh, inside the box, there were a couple little, uh, you know, breakable things that they could, uh, you know, play with. But there's also chopsticks. There was a weird little uh, chopstick fly game that you can you, you could play. But they weren't real chopsticks. These were chopsticks, I guess, made for kids because I guess they figured American kids would be too hard for them to figure out actually how to use chopsticks. So you can see these are actually attached with a little uh, claw. So they're almost like little, uh, little, um, not pliers. Uh, I can't think of the word, but you know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, so that comes in at number two because it's about, you know, $282 uh, on average sales there. So this will take us to our top pick, number one. And uh, not surprised given the time. And uh, again, with Cobra Kai returning and the, the excitement around that, Johnny Lawrence comes in at number one. Uh, this is averaging $350 uh, right now for this carded figure. Granted, this was only over two sales one of which was uh, $450 at a high because I think there was an autograph on the card. I mean, whether the autograph was uh, legitimate or not, I you know, you can't say for certain, but somebody paid a little extra because uh, they had uh, Zabka Sig on this carded figure. 
but still, even without that uh, 450 high, this was the other figure still sold for uh, 250, which is how we got our 350 average. But still, regardless, he still comes in at number one with that $350 average. So Johnny Lawrence, even with his tiny little uh, appearance at the start of Karate Kid 2 getting beat up by his uh, karate school teacher and sending him on that downward spiral, this figure is actually kind of important if you think of it that way. Because that downward spiral is what gives us you know, the show that we have. It was a lot to do with what happened at the end of the first movie and the beginning of that second movie. And let's not downplay that either. Just stick around for a second or two, and we'll just uh, take a look at our honorable mentions. And for our honorable mentions, as I noted before, we're going to get into these uh, action play sets that they sold. And uh, they weren't shy about uh, creating them for this uh for this toy line. Usually you get like one or two vehicles or or play sets or something like that, but Karate Kid not being really a vehicle driven uh, property, unless they wanted to give Daniel his, uh, you know, that yellow ride that he got from the first movie. Uh, we start in with our first one, which is the Breakaway Challenge play set, which basically looks like some sort of dojo with a few things for him to break, like looks like bottles and some boards and what have you. Uh, that one, it's 135 bucks to find a box to play set for that one. So not too bad, you know, for this set. It would have come in, you know, on the lower end of the list it had we included in the regular run, but still pretty fun. Uh, the next one we have coming up is uh, Sato's Cannery. And if you saw the sequel movie, this is where he learned basically his drum technique to block as uh, Miyagi was sending hooks shooting right at him. I don't know really what those hooks were for. I guess that's how they move crates and uh, and whatnot. But this was like a whole big play set that you could, uh, you know, spread out. And uh, it, it covered a little bit of ground. And uh, not too bad. It sells about 190 bucks for uh, for the Sato Cannery. Moving on to the next one, another little play set, the uh, Corner Challenge play set, which again looks like just another uh, another little gym kind of area with some things for him to break and kick over and practice. A little uh, speed ball or tether ball. Again, bringing me back to Napoleon Dynamite for some reason. Uh, but that one is actually averaging about 198 bucks or so. So just under 200 bucks for this one. And there were three sales of this set where the other set, other sets, there's generally only one sale, you know, every few months, uh, because you know, there's not a lot of these. And I don't think there's a lot of people looking for these karate kid, uh, play sets these days, but if you do find them, uh, you know, they aren't uh, super cheap, even with boxes. Again, you can see some of these boxes are banged up. So just having the box alone is uh, good enough for a lot of collectors. But again, the, better the box, uh, you can get it graded and the higher the price, but just keep that in mind. Don't uh, scoff at a little bit of a beat up box. So our next little set is the competition center. I don't know why they didn't call it a tournament challenge or something like that. Competition center. It's basically the same as the uh, tournament two pack that NECA had, but uh, you don't get the actual figures. You get the ref, which is kind of fun, but they didn't give him the right colored shirt, which is uh, you know a little disconcerting. You should have had the red shirt, I think. But still, still pretty cool. You get the little competition set uh, so you can recreate, you know, Karate Kid 1, basically, with your Karate two, Kid 2 figures. So not too bad. 250 on uh, that. There was only the one sale on the one box set uh, that I could find. Which will take us to our last set, which is the Attack Alley and Training Center set. Now, this is almost like a little house like uh, set up to here that they had in Okinawa. Uh, this one, 260 bucks. Uh, on average, there was two sales of this uh, box set, and, and you can see it's pretty cool. I, I would have liked to have had this one. Uh, you got the little uh, balcony there. You got the little the paper doors. It's I think there's ninjas possibly included with this set. I don't know. Still kind of fun. Uh, well, they actually did. Uh, Chosen did kind of dress up as a ninja in that one bit, didn't he? In the movie. I don't know. It's been a while since I've seen Karate Kid too, but. Uh, there, that, that's our list. Uh, again, hyped to get back to Cobra Kai so I can uh, catch up and watch the new season. But I thought it would just be fun to just take a few minutes just to uh, look back on these old Karate Kid toys. Again, most of them are from the uh, Remco line from 1986. But that that was really the the run of toys that we had from back in the day for uh, anything Karate Kid. Uh, outside of that, everything else has been like kind of those uh, recreations to try to capitalize on everybody's nostalgia from like Funko and... Uh, and with NECA and uh, what have you, but uh, that's our list. All this stuff still sells and still sells pretty good. So if you can find them, some of this stuff on the cheap uh, and it's what you're looking for, you can do uh, do pretty well. So with that, hopefully you enjoyed this and I will see you guys all next week. <laughs>